Oops. And that's what happens when you die now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Big Rick Games tutorial. In this series, we are going through and making Call of Duty Zombies as a clone in Unity 3D. And today we are going to set up enemy deaths and we made a bunch of changes to the character controller. Make sure you subscribe and like so you catch our next video. We'll be uploading a couple of these videos in the next couple weeks. So at the end, this is what we'll have and you should be able to see the enemies and see them all over. And we added some sounds, footsteps. Alright, so we're back in our scene now. And the first thing we're going to do is delete the boost FPS controller that we had before. We added that with the FPS kit player controller and they've been having some problems and a couple of you guys said that you had problems with um, the enemies walking through you and uh, two models showing up for your guns and stuff like that. So I think it's going to be easier to use the FPS kit player controller and we will just implement our boosts into that controller so we don't have any clashing or any problems that we can't see. So I'm going to go into our boost controller and delete the whole thing. That will delete our camera and everything like that and that's why you don't see any scene in our game now. We want to go down into our assets and drag our player into our scene. And that will put the player controller that's included in the FPS kit in our scene. This is just a default player so we'll have to make some modifications. Make sure that the tag is set to player. And we have our hierarchy here with our weapon camera root. If you open all the way down to the weapon manager, we can see the weapons that we're using. We're gonna change the default values. So the first one, I'm gonna put pistol. So just click the select button on the side and search for pistol. And the second one, I am going to put something more fun. Let's do a scar and it's called scar new. You can see under that if you open the array list the weapons in game. Those are the weapons that you can select from. So there's some pretty good weapons here. The scar, sniper, uh, pistol, RPG, shotgun. Since we're using their complete player controller and not just their controller for the arm animations it includes other stuff like player death and sounds like foot footsteps and bullets and stuff like that. So just by adding that into the scene, if we press play, we still have our mini map here, which I will take off, but you can see that we have our gun and that is super choppy with recording. And I'm gonna disable the mini map. We don't need that, we don't want that. And it looks like by default, it's only moving in the X axis. So I'm going to go to the main camera, which is under the root go and then the main camera root and add component and we're going to add I guess this is probably where it was before um, we want to add the mouse look in the y direction so if you click the select circle you can just search for mouse look and set this to the y and I think we should put it pretty low if I remember correctly this will all depend on your mouse settings and stuff like that so just pick one that uh, feels good to you and for your camera after you put the script in the main camera, we want the X sensitivity to be zero since this is only Y, although it doesn't matter what you put there. And then we want to put that same script on the weapon camera so the weapon camera moves in the Y direction. So go to your weapon camera. There should be an empty script object in there and select mouse Y and put the sensitivity to the same sensitivity you have on your main camera. And the next thing we want to do is go into our enemy, our zombie asset. We have zombie 01 in here, but when you want to change the one in the project folders because we instantiate new ones and we want them to have the same. So if you search for zombie 1 and then tag this as enemy, but I don't see it here. So you can add a tag. You just click add tag and element 5, type in enemy. If you go back to the zombie one, tag that as enemy. And the FPS kit that we added last time automatically puts particle effect when you shoot 
uh, object tagged enemy. So now when we push play and shoot a target or an enemy, it should have a blood splat. Also make sure that the fall damage multiplier is zero on your player character. And now when we press play, we should be able to see blood coming out when we hit the enemies. And for some reason, sometimes when you press play, the gun doesn't line up right. I don't know what that is, but it has to be something with Unity because you see now it's fine. But you can see now we have blood coming out of the city. And we have the footsteps. You can hear that. Next, we want the zombies to take damage when we shoot them. So we're going to give them health and we're going to do that by opening the prefab of the zombie and editing the script that manages the zombie, which is enemy controller. Double click that and we're going to add a function down here, which I called apply damage. And we will call this whenever a bullet hits the enemy. So we just have void apply damage. We enter the damage, which will be determined by which weapon you're using. And then you take that damage away from the health, which we do not have yet. So we need to declare a variable up here, which I am going to put as a float, which I will add up here, float health. And then I am going to tell it how much health to have in the awake function. I'm going to put health equals 20 plus 1.25 F times the round that we're in so that they have more health each round that you progress through. Game.round. And for this, we're going to need a reference to our game management script. So up here, we will create a variable that references game management, and we need to find that in the awake by game equals game equals find object type game management, and there's only one, so this should be fine. And then we set the health to 20 plus 1.5, 1.25 times the game round. So now that we apply damage, we need to tell it what to do when they run out of health, which is this death function that we have not created yet. And I'm going to add that below apply damage. And there's a few things commented out that we're going to add through the tutorial. And for now, we just need to know nav.stop that will stop the uh, target seeking pathfinding. Capsule collider dot is trigger equals true, which will turn the trigger into or turn the capsule collider into a trigger. So when it's dead, your bullets won't stop when it hits them anymore. And we will destroy the game object this particular instance of the enemy after four seconds and we have four seconds so that we can play the death animation which we'll add in this tutorial too so after four seconds they should disappear if we go back and play we can see that it comes up with an error capsule collider does not exist it's because we forgot to reference it in our script so i'm going to insert it up here capsule collider capsule collider and reference it in our set the value in the await function so now if we save this and go back to our scene, press play. We can see that after it's run out of health, it just disappears after four seconds. And the handgun bullets do, I think, 10 or 20 damage, so it should take about three shots. And after four seconds, it should disappear. So now we can add our animation, which will make it look like it's falling over after it dies and I have included that animation for you. You can download it in the description and let me grab that now. I'm going to make a new folder in the assets folder and call it animations. And in here I am going to import the asset animation and I'm going to import the backstab fall animation that we have. And the first thing you'll need to do is click that animation, go to rig, go to animation type, change it to humanoid. Click apply, and when we go back to animations, we should see our guy here, and that's our death animation. So what we wanna do is clean that up a little bit, because there's a lot of extra time before and after. So under the name, which we're gonna change, I'm gonna put it death animation, and then I'm gonna change the length to right when he starts around 4.1 and end right when he stops moving at the bottom around 3.0 and then in root transform root transform position y we're going to bake that into the pose 
so that it falls correctly onto the ground now if you press play. Before it was above the ground, now it's on the ground. Apply that and we have our new animation now. If you open it in the project directory, you'll see the death animation file and that is what you want to put in your enemy animation controller. So if we open our enemy animation controller, if we search here zombie one, we'll see our zombie animation controller and we can just drag that right into it. So now there's a new state and we can sit, make a transition to the death animation from both the idle and the zombie walk. And for this, we're going to add a perimeter to our controller. So in the perimeter plus, go down to trigger, which is basically a bool, but it just triggers to true and I'm going to call it is dead. And then I'm going to trigger that when they die so it knows when to trigger this animation here. So if we trick on, click on the transition to death animation we can make the, the conditions is dead and you can tell it how much you want the two animations to blend and it can be pretty small on this one it doesn't really matter but you can see it'll be idle and then he'll fall down. And we want to do the same for the zombie walk transition to death animation. Set that to is dead. And this one I'm going to blend it a little more. So when you press play, when it dies, it'll do that. And that's all you have to do in the controller, in the animation controller. It's that easy. What we need to do now is tell the script when to trigger that is dead variable. So in our back in our enemy controller script, we want to reference the animator, so I'm going to add animator and in. I'm going to set that variable to the component in the instance, which is the animator. Make sure that's in the awake function. And then down in the death function, we have this already commented out, um, but you can add it here. Anim.set trigger, and then you tell it which trigger set and it's is dead in the animation controller and that's all you have to do save that and in our enemy controller we forgot to put is dead in here so set it to false initially and then when their health goes below zero we can set it to true so we know when to stop the navigation save the script go back to your scene and if we play that see when we shoot them, they will fall over like they're dead. And you can see they're still moving after you shoot them, and that is because the navigation is still on, and I think it should turn towards us too actually. So we want to turn off the navigation of the enemies once they die. So in the script, we need to tell it to stop the navigation in the update, because that's where it's setting the new navigation path. So. I'm going to say if not is dead, then run the set navigation command, and we don't need the speed command either because they're dead, so that should fix that problem. So now we have an enemy that dies and falls over, it looks good, and if we press play, Oops, and that's what happens when you die now, so we do have a death animation and all that. And that's it for this tutorial, make sure you subscribe and like so you catch our next video. We'll be uploading a couple of these videos in the next couple weeks, and we will continue our series as well as release some other videos giving you free assets that you can use for anything. Thanks again for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.